So next up on the unibody uh, rescue, uh, we're gonna do more safety upgrades. We're gonna get rid of this suicide master cylinder here, this single pot, and we're converting it to power. Uh, we're converting it to uh, power brakes with a dual pot, and we're also converting it to disc brakes. <laughs> I'd say he's a nut job. Uh, and I'm gonna show you the stuff we're using and how we go about it. I've actually already, uh, we took care of the disc brakes already, but I'm gonna show them to you because I still gotta put the brake hoses on them. Uh, the disc brake kit came from CPP. Very easily installation, very easy kit to put on. We've actually uh, done three of these kits now. And they've been super easy and super great kit to deal with. Really, really believe these are a great kit for these trucks. So let's look at the other parts we have. So here's the hoses for the the, the brake hoses. Goes on the uh, calipers up front. I still got to do that. But I was going to do this this brake or this uh, power brake kit here first. Let's take a look at what we've got in the box. Uh, now my tripod is still in the uh, truck from the race, so I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Y'all yeah, will have to forgive me as we go a little old school today, trying to hold everything and open everything. Day or two. But let's get this open and see what's inside. I'm gonna have to switch hands real quick. All right, let's take a look at what's inside. As you can see, these kits are well packaged right here. Get this out of the way real quick. You stay there, I'll clean you up in a minute. Uh, here is the little pieces so you can do some self bleeding. We're gonna lay all this out. Um, here's our boot, rod, and it actually has an adjustable rod in there so you can actually adjust the pedal. Very good, very good. Here we have, what is in this box? We have, okay, we have our mountain brackets right here uh, for the kit. Uh, this is difficult one-handed. Ta-da, big box has disappeared. All right, let's get this box right here. This box is a master cylinder. And lay it out right there. Toss that over there. Put the hardware right there. Toss that over there. Which means you know what's in this bad boy. This is our brake booster. used to having a tripod. So there's our brake booster. Toss this down here. Toss this down here. All right. So here's our here's our kit. We have all of our uh, brackets. We have our bolts here to bolt everything up with. We have our uh, dual pot master cylinder now. And of course our rubber lines and our bleeding stuff. This master cylinder here has, you can run the lines in like either side. So very, very good kit, very good quality kit. Uh, really, really like this kit. This thing, uh, it, it's, it's pretty simple. If you look back here, you'll see the mounting bolts back here that holds this on. Simple as unhook the rod, take those mounting bolts right there loose, take that brake line right there loose that's probably not gonna wanna come off, unhook those two wires right there, and peep, pull that out. And then you have this bracket that goes between the firewall and the booster, the 
master cylinder bolts straight to the booster. And then you have this rod set up right here that is adjustable that you can adjust the length on to get where it needs to be. That That's legit it. And then you have to run a couple brake lines. Now there's a couple of ways to do these brake lines. Any way will work. People will argue over different things. It's all opinions. Here is, there, there's plenty of ways to do it, but here's a couple ways to do it. One, you can tear all the old lines off the truck and put new lines across everything. I know a lot of people would prefer to do it that way. The way I did a similar conversion, just non-power, because I don't personally care for power brakes. Uh, the way I did a similar conversion on uh, the Galaxy, when I went to a dual reservoir is I did not take all of those off. I went to the proportioning valve or the distribution block on these down here. Uh, all three lines go, or one line goes into that and three lines come out. That's the way the single pot works. I simply took the one line that was already here, used it for the front brakes. It was already teed in there, unhooked the rear line put a block off where the rear line goes in and then i put a union and ran a new line from there up to the master cylinder for the rear brakes i have been running that galaxy for five years that way it has never given me a single leak or a single problem now there's there's multiple ways to do it again you can do all new lines you can do it that way you could do the front that way, but then run an entirely new line at the back. There's several ways to go about it. At the end of the day, it's a, it's simple as a preference. First thing I'm gonna to have to do is somebody has zip tied all the uh, all the plug wires. Anyway, uh, get those off the line then we're going to undo these this is a pressure switch uh for brake lights you can go back like that if you want to i personally don't care for these switches um i like to know i won't have brake lights anytime i can so i go to a later 60s style forward uh switch that goes on the pedal and it's basically just a, a button and i put a piece of angle iron on the pedal you see me do it with a cougar if you go back and watch that piece of angle iron on the pedal or on the column or somewhere just to hold that button so the pedal touches it. Very simple. Uh, I like them much better than this. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take this fitting right here loose. And just because I expect some issues, we're gonna go ahead and put some heat on that. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go ahead and pretend like we've already tried and it was uh, rusted shut. And we're just gonna go ahead and put some heat on that and take care of that right now. Okay, yeah, without my tripod, I get ahead of myself. The secret, heat it, Ooh. get it a little warm, squirt, squirt, squirt. And then in the case of this one, somebody worked on it before, so it should be a 3 8 This one was more 3 8 adjacent, so I had to use a pair of pliers, but just pop it. Once it pops loose, just kind of work it out and back because it'll want to stick on this line right here and the nut not want to turn so when you first break it loose work it out and back out and back out and back out and back till you can finally go like here 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 and then you can start going here 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 until you can go here 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 and then until once you make the full revolution once you make the full revolution you're golden so now that that's off take these mountain bolts loose and slide this master cylinder out of here Okay, you can see we popped these four bolts out. Again, I apologize. Normally I got a tripod and uh, you can record it while I'm working, but uh, it's was in my truck left for the race. So I took these four bolts out and that's the way I do it. And honestly, you can pull that like that and it'll come off the rod. So I take the rod out uh, separately after I take this off. Instead of, I know some people like to take, go inside and unhook the rod from the pedal I do this first just because it doesn't it doesn't really matter but uh i do this first just to give me the extra light coming in from out here so we're going to take this pot uh which actually is bad because 
you know, you can see fluid running out the back of it, which means the seals in it are actually shot. I'm gonna put it down there. We've got all of our new stuff right here now that we can work with. Here's why I tackle that situation the way I do. A lot of people are not aware of this. Um, more modern brake stuff has an E-clip. These are, these rods are held in by a shouldered bolt through an eyelet. That's how they fit together. Uh, and it's easier to get this taken apart when you have a little more light coming in from where the master cylinder was. So that's why I do it the way I do it. You don't have to do it that way. You can take this off first and pull it all through the firewall if Again, you want Again, like everything I do, you do things your way. I'm just showing you what I do and uh, showing you the process of converting this thing to a power disc brake setup. So uh, again, I'll show you the disc stuff here shortly. Right now we're doing the power brake stuff. Now, here's where I gotta take this bracket and we bolt it here, it stands this off. Uh, it bolts here, it stands this off, and then it converts it from this bolt pattern to that bolt pattern so that it all bolts together. Okay, so here's how this works. You take these bolts off right here, these nuts. Again, I'm working one-handed today. Take these nuts off right here. Okay, that one, just a hair above finger tight. All right, take these off. Then you put bracket on like that. these back on Ratcheting wrenches is one of the best inventions ever made. Okay. I tried to video that the best way I could, but it's as simple as that. You put the bracket on, and for those that were paying attention, the bracket, I actually had it flipped over. The little ears should point out, not in, so you can get access to the bolts. You can kind of see right there what I'm talking about. Uh, the little ears should flip out. No big deal. Um, so you can tell that, you know, when it's not designed to have power brakes, they have to take advantage of the space they've got. So that's is that's that's for it rides. It's going to take up some space under the hood, but that's the way it's designed. You're trying to put something on a vehicle that it was not designed to have. So. There is no interference issue. I can stick my whole fist in there. So there is no interference issue. It's just, it takes advantage of the space under the hood. All right, so the same as with the others, the nuts are already on here. No problem there at all. It comes with the hardware already in the place. So you don't even have to guess where the bolts go. Don't you hate it when you buy something that just comes with a bag of bolts. You have to figure out, you're supposed to use a short bolt, long bolt sideways bolt, the metric bolt, the standard bolt, whatever. It also comes with this little rubber cap. Make sure you pull this little rubber cap out. That exposes your push rod. If you don't pull a little rubber cap out, if you don't pull the little jack-in-the-box hat out, um, yeah, then uh, your rod's not going to be able to actuate. And then our master cylinder's next. I'm going to show with one hand, but I'll probably have to end up just sits on there just like that. It'll hang there for one second. Try to do this one-handed. Get a bolt started. Oh, that was easier. You know what, guys? If anything, if I can prove that you can do this with one hand, there is no reason why 
somebody couldn't do this in a shop themselves over a weekend. Just like that, like that. And then you would take your handy dandy wrench right here. Realize that it's wrong size wrench. Lay it down there. And for these purposes, get your thumb wrench out and just give these a little tug so that you can see that's all there is to it. That's it. Now we have power brakes. Very simple. Now you'll have to run a vacuum hose from here to a vacuum port on your engine, which I've got to look around and find one on this engine. I'm sure there's one here somewhere, but we'll have to run a vacuum hose here over to here to find a vacuum port to make the brakes work. Now, if for some reason you have an engine, and this may be one, where you do not have a vacuum port, you have a couple of, uh, oh, I got a plug right here that I can pull and put a port in right there. I'm put a tree in. So I have a threaded, you can see it right there. There's a plug, a threaded plug in there. We'll unthread that plug and put a port right in there. Boom, boom, done. But if you find yourself where you do not have a place to run a vacuum on a, uh, and some older motors may not have it, you have a couple of options. One, and you need to take the intake off to do this. Let me preface that because you don't want to put metal shavings in your motor. But one, you can drill a hole, tap it, and put a plug in or a tree in, vacuum tree in, and then you got a vacuum port. Two, Carburetor spacer. You can get you a carburetor spacer with a vacuum port on it or drill a spacer and put a port in it. Either one of those will suffice for what you're doing here. But it's just that simple. Now all you have to do is uh, run your lines. You know, you can make them so they come down this way. The sky's the limit now. Turn them, come back here and run down the firewall. You know, whatever you want. That That is a design choice for you, for however you want it to look. And as you can see, again, we have plenty of space here. So, again, this is just showing you how this goes together and how this kit goes together. Now let's look at the rod that goes on the inside. First off, your master cylinder comes with plugs for the sides you don't use. So you can plug one side off. Um, secondly, here's your bag of goodies. Here's your bag of goodies. Here's your rod for the inside. These are greasable heim joints too. How great is that? Uh, that, there's the one to match this bolt. It's gonna match that. That's that one. And then you have a rubber boot to go over that hole right there where the rod comes through. This is the one we use. And then you have an adjustable rod so you can roll this rod in and out. They're reverse threaded on each end. So as you roll it one way, it gets longer. As you roll it the other way, it gets shorter. So you can just turn this rod a little bit and tweak where your pedal needs to be to get your proper throw. That's very simple, very, very simple. It also comes with this so that you can Bench bleed it. Now let's talk about bench bleeding. Don't let the term bench bleeding uh, get you carried away with literal. Yes, you can put it on a bench and, and bleed it. My granddaddy always told me to work smarter, not harder. So put it on the vehicle and basically bench bleed it on the vehicle. Boom, boom. Same process. You just have somebody sit in there and go, shh, 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 shh until you get the master cylinder bench bled, then hook it to your lines. Very, very simple, very simple. But that's all there is to this kit. This is a, this is a very easy, very easy kit to do. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more simple. Everything's drilled correctly. These holes back here are even slotted so you can move this up and down. I have it as far up as it'll go right now which is almost level with this lip. It's just about one finger width below that lip right there. It's perfect for the hood. And that gives us plenty of room for valve cover clearance. Uh, and once we get 
everything buttoned up. Those wires are not going to run across there like that because, well, I don't want them running that close to the header or exhaust anyway. So uh, that's going to change. But at the end of the day, that's all there is to it. It's very simple, very easy kit to install. There really is nothing to this kit at all. It's if you can unbolt stuff and bolt stuff right back where you took it off, don't you can need do any this. skill level to do this. You don't need any special tools. This is literally a pay attention job. This is one of those things where put stuff back in the same place as you took it off. Just put the new parts there instead of the old parts. Very simple, very easy thing to do. There's nothing, there's nothing to this kit uh, as far as how to do it. And uh, I'm gonna get this thing jacked up, knock the front wheels off, and I'm gonna show you the disc brake kit that we put on a couple months back or whatever. All right, forgive the lighting. I pulled a uh, tire off so you could see the the disc brake kit. This is a CPP kit, as I said before. Uh, it literally, you take the four bolts out of the backing plate for the drum brake, drop them off, unhook the brake line, you're done. This ha this kit comes with wheel bearings, everything. Uh, slides right over the stock spindle, pack them with grease, put the nut on. I mean, it's it's literally as simple as it gets. The the when you take the four bolts out back there there's a bracket that comes with it that bolts in its place that bracket holds this caliper just make sure you're centered uh, you slide this on put the caliper on you're done hook the brake line back up it literally is as dummy proof simple as you can get the only thing it does not tell you if you wanted to nitpick this kit the only issue you have with this kit or that i had with it is the bracket for the brake caliper is not labeled left or right. So if if you're not careful, you'll have the wrong one on the wrong side. It's got a little ear that bumps out and goes around and they go in a certain spot. And if you're not careful, you'll have the left one on the right side. It's easy to figure out once you start putting the bolts in, the bolts don't fit because it's on the wrong side. So, I mean, it's kind of dummy proof in that way, but it would save you some time if they would just scratch a damn L into one of them or an R into one of them or, you know, even put a sticker on it that said L or R. That would make it, you know, a, a second or two easier. But at the end of the day, it's a really simple kit, really easy to use. It comes with every piece and it bolts right on. Now, one of the questions I had when I went to order this kit or the first kit we've done, I think, because again, this is the third one we've done. When uh, when I first talked to him about this kit, my question was, okay, what about brake pads? If we're doing an aftermarket kit, eh, if I need brake pads, am I gonna have a nightmare? No, the brake pads on this are, I want to say, he told me, but uh it's literally it goes up the next generation and uses the brake pad they use for a long time and i want to say he told me that these brake pads on this run from 74 i know 73 the body style changed but i think he told me 74 to 89 or 86 or something like that ford truck brake pad so it's literally a stock ford truck pad that drops into it so it's literally no problem to find uh replacement pads if you need one so that is one of the things so yeah we have a disc brake converted power brake converted a uh, power disc brake 1962 unibody that you could do in your garage in an afternoon literally but it's one of those things where uh you can pull it into your shop or even in your driveway, take it apart in your driveway uh, on a Saturday morning, Saturday night, you're cruising. Worst case, you bleed the brakes the next day if you're really a slow worker or you run into a uh, broken off bolt or something. We know how these old trucks are, so broken bolts are real, uh, a real possibility when you go taking old stuff apart. But if you run into an issue, twist off a brake line, something like that, you can still do it in the weekend. But this is literally a job that you could start on 7 30 8 o'clock at morning you could be driving it before it was dark at, at that evening uh it, it's really a simple simple kit to put on uh and it's pretty affordable it's way leaps and bounds cheaper than 
a lot of the high-end name brand stuff. And let's face it, this is a 292 wide block with a three-speed manual. We are not racing this truck. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we do not need, matter of fact, the drum brakes, non-power is probably more than adequate for this truck. But we don't need, my point is, we don't need drilled and slotted rotors and fancy race pads and all this stuff that some of these other companies throw in to entice you to spend that, you know, $2,500 for a kit or something like that. This kit is stupid cheap and it's something that anybody can do. I, I don't even remember the cost of the disc brake conversion uh, now because we actually bought these two parts separate. Now you can buy them in one kit together, I believe from CPP, but we actually bought these two separate. I don't even remember now. Honestly, I don't because it's been sitting in a box for a while. I mean, it's, it's, it's stupid cheap and it's just a safety thing. So now you have a modern braking system that is extremely safe and honestly the braking system is be the best part of this truck right now as far as the quality it's just good stuff so hopefully 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 this takes some of the fear out of it and some of you guys can go on that now cpp doesn't give me anything i don't even get a discount from them uh matter of fact i've only talked to them on the phone one time and it was just to ask them about the the pad stuff so I don't get anything from them. It's just a kit that I've used three times now and it's been so easy and so just direct bolt on and so flawless that why, I mean, I've got no reason not to keep going back to them. Uh, you can go with some of those other name brands if you want, but you're gonna spend, let's be honest, nearly five times the money uh, on some of these kits. But, you know, you get to brag about being drilled and slotted and um, you'll, you'll, you'll have a fancy little word carved in your caliper. I mean, so I guess you get what you pay for. This, these, this kit really is as simple, bare bones, bolt on as you can get and requires absolutely no skill level to make it work. It is absolutely a easy kit to install uh it's one of those things that i believe anybody can do on any given day the only thing that's going to require you to have a little bit of involvement a little bit of input a little bit of skill is actually making the brake lines and uh i mean i guess we can go over that but there's no reason to cloudy this particular video up with it we'll go over that as we run the other stuff too because we're going to put a fuel tank under the bed run fuel lines, we can run brake lines, we can do all that stuff all at one time. So just absolutely, absolutely one of the simplest conversions you can do. Absolutely no uh, special effort is required. It really is that simple. In the next video, uh, hopefully we'll be getting some of those brake lines done and getting a cooling system in and a fuel system in and actually try to drive this thing around. I think that's coming in the next one. So one of the things I want to do is pull these valve covers off and take a look. And we got something, a bit of a surprise going there. But I know the lighting's not great, but these things are clean, just clean oil on them. See a little bit of oil right here so we know we're oil under the top. Yeah, everything is nice in here for a motor that is set for many many years that's nice i can live with that so i said we had something for that what do we got oh how about some heavy cast aluminum valve covers there by the way is the completed look of it power disc brake conversion nice aluminum valve covers i went the extra mile i went to uh track supply and bought some nice little acre nuts had to trim the the studs to be the right length just so those were tightened down right uh nice fancy air cleaner uh so the next step i think is i gotta finish up i got a radiator put in it I gotta finish up this stuff i'm doing oil change and run some brake lines and fuel lines. Um, 
I'm gonna put headers on it and two and a half inch exhaust out the back. And yeah, I think she'll be ready for ready for a road. So trip. just so you know, this thing will in the future be getting a uh Holly Sniper EFI system. Uh, but not at this current moment. I want to make it run and drive and make sure everything works. Electrical system's good, lights work. Drive, stops, shifts, does everything it's supposed to do so that we know there's no issues so that when we put the sniper system on is if there is a problem with it running, well, we know it's nothing here. It's something in the setup of the sniper or whatever. So we want to make sure we get everything else right so that we know if we're chasing any gremlins, we know exactly where to look for the gremlins we're chasing. Uh, it just makes life easier that way because if not, if we put it on there right now, well, we don't know if all this stuff back here works or not anyway. So, you know what I mean? Got to do things in order. And honestly, it's not going to hurt to drive this truck around a week or two or a few days or something as it is and enjoy it and then go, okay. Because these intakes are a dry system if I know they're not. Are they a dry system? Anyway, these intakes are not hard to change. They're just this, some bolts right down through there. Poop! Radiator hose. And pops right off. I mean, you don't even have to pull the distributor. You don't have to pull the oil. You don't have to pull none of this stuff out to change this intake. So it's it's one of those where it's, uh, it's almost as easy as doing this power disc brake kit. And... Uh, yeah, so there's no reason for us to try to put that in front of everything else. So stay tuned because there is some modern upgrades coming for this thing in addition to the modern brakes to make this thing dead nuts reliable but still retain that old school cool that we do like so much around here. We'll see you on the next one. I hope you enjoy this little series on this unibody truck. And uh, please, I mean... It helps tremendously. Share the videos with your friends. You find something you like, go back and watch the Retiring a Legacy video. Find some things you like and uh, hang in there with us because we've got some road trip plans in mind too with some, uh, with some stuff. Y'all stay tuned. Hope Lord bless you more today than he did yesterday. Uh, God bless y'all. We'll see you in the next one. I'd say he's a nut job. <laughs>